Welcome to the Thunder Hour Podcast, hosted by Trey Hamilton and produced by Leif Dietrich. Podcast. This is episode five. We are live here in studio in Woodstock, Ontario, Canada, the home of the worst team in the Western Ontario Hockey League. Um, I'm just kidding, guys. We, we make a living off of talking crap from Woodstock, and I love it. Um, yeah. Sorry, yeah. everybody ignore Leaf being Leaf for a sec there. I have no idea what's going on. Uh, it's another exciting episode of Thunder Hour. We're really happy everybody could join us today. Um, we got a lot to talk about. We are going to recap last week's game against the Dunville Arrows. Thunder came out on top 6-2, to two, although it should have been 6-1. to one. We'll talk about that a little bit more in detail, as well as I'm happy my voice is back, and also that we are going to be making a drive down to Tilbury um, for a Saturday, October 28th game against the rivaled, hated Tilbury Bluebirds. Leaf. Yes. Yes. Are you excited, and are you ready? I am very excited and very ready. So, Leif, first of all, you work like 25 hours a day, and then you find time to shoot this podcast, even though it's only 24 hours in a day. My question to you is, is how do you do it? Work hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, you heard it there. You heard it first, ladies and gentlemen. I work hard. Leaf I is, just, I find time, you know, gotta get pucks in deep, you no, know, gotta no. stick to the game plan, you know, and that's how it is. You're a Leafs fan, I'm not surprised whatsoever that that's your answer. Um, uh, so anyway, yeah, let's, uh, let's start breaking it down, oh, I'm really cool. excited. Um, I know from, I mean, my perspective, my point of view, the game against Dunville went exactly as we had hoped, as we had planned. Um, it was last... Saturday night in Dunville. Uh, a few Thunder fans made the trip. Not as many, obviously, as to Woodstock, because Woodstock's right around the corner. But still, a uh, pretty good show um, of people that were wearing black and gold. Bill Ryan posted some pictures on the Thunder uh, Facebook group and uh, the Thunder Instagram showing quite a few of us uh, yep. who made the trip. Uh, overall, I like the arena in Dunville. It's a good setup. It's the first time I'd ever been to that arena, so... It was a pretty good first experience for going down to Dunville. I'd like to probably go see a Mudcats game at some point. Um, you know, see see what a, an actual loud crowd is like there. Because, again, new team in the league. It's tough because they don't have an established fan base. And people don't really, you know, make the energy and the noise that they need to. I mean, they forget. We've touched on this a few times. They forget that this is still professional hockey, even though it's senior, men's hockey, whatever. And Mike Hawley, Bill Ryan, Jimmy Petrie, all these guys have talked about it. They want to get rid of the title senior hockey because it creates some kind of stigma that it's 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 just beer league, it's just men's yeah. league, right? And it's not that at all. It's it's a lot more complicated than that. So, again, Dunville, great job with uh, you know bringing us in, inviting us, nice arena. Um, food was pretty good. Uh, product on the ice for Dunville better than Woodstock, from what I can say. Yeah, um, yeah. 100%. yeah, they seem more of a team, more collective. I don't know if Woodstock Woodstock has probably more skill. They're just not yeah. a, as cohesive, and Orangeville's just not very good this year. So uh, I think Dunville could sneak into the playoffs this year. I think it'll be interesting to see. Uh, I'm really I'm really looking forward to this. But, yeah, it was a 6-2 to two final for the Thunder. Uh, as I said, should have been 6-1, to one, whatever. That's included all in what you're about to see here. This is going to be a quick cut to our Tilsonburg Thunder highlights, brought to you by Domino's Pizza Tilsonburg. A reminder to all fans... We are playing a home game next Saturday against Dunville, the aforementioned Arrows. And uh, just in case you didn't know, Domino's Pizza sponsors the Thunder, and they do a 5-for-5 five five deal. So what that means is that if the Thunder score five goals at home, Leaf, you can go to the Marwood Lounge following the game, as long as the Thunder have scored five at home, and you can show your game ticket or your admission stamp or whatever it takes and get a free voucher for a Domino's three topping medium pizza and it's completely free nothing beats free pizza and I think we all know based on all the score sheets this Thunder team can score five goals I mean Petrolia is one of the best teams in the league we put up five against them if we had all home games so far I can tell you I would be 20 pounds heavier because we would have got free pizza so yeah Domino's shout out thank you for uh, sponsoring the Tilsonburg Thunder 
And uh, yeah, so these are your Tilsonburg Thunder highlights versus the Dunville Arrows in Dunville, brought to you by Domino's Pizza. Second, what? Second, so. I, I, I know it's all red. I think I'm. It's just tired and whatnot. So. I was a little bit. He's sick right now. Uh, oh my god. Making wires sick. And uh, so I'll probably. Package brought to you by Domino's Pizza. Thunder come out on top in Dunville, six to two. The final score. Uh, Leaf, you were there uh, as well as myself. Pretty exciting game overall. The first period was tight, one nothing after one, and I mean uh, the Thunder ran away within the second as they always do. Uh, but yeah, what were your overall thought, overall thoughts of the game? Excuse me. Um, I thought we played really well. Mm -hmm. I think um, all three of our first games, um, we were starting off a bit slow in the first. Mm -hmm. But the second period, I think we're the most dominant team 
in the league, and then the third period, we just pulled the fort. Mm -hmm. And honestly, if that's the recipe they're going for all year, it's working, it's going to work, no one's going to stop us, so yep. keep doing it. Yep. I mean, we have, like, like the best offense I've seen in this league. Like, Tilbury had a good offense last year. Stratford was obviously amazing. But I think this year, the, the signings, the additions, the way that things have clicked so far, I, I really like everything I've seen from the Thunder Leaf, honestly. First three games, I know it's a tough test because Petrolia wasn't at 100%. They didn't have all their guys, so you can build that excuse. And then you can say, well, Woodstock's crap, and Dunville's a new team. So that would be the argument against the Thunder. But from what we've seen, breakouts, power play setup, goaltending, Sags, and Andre, what a start. Defensively. And penalty kill. We penalty kill. like seven penalties that game, too. Yeah, I mean, the Thunder were obviously, Ebdy's not going to be happy with the amount of penalties we took, and some of them were questionable, but some of them were justified. Yeah. I, I agree it was a lot of penalties to take, but the penalty kill has been stellar thus far this year. I believe they've only surrendered one power play goal. I'd have to double check uh, my fact checking. I think they gave up one power play goal to Petrolia, and I believe they've killed off every penalty since then. So. Um, it's been outstanding. Unless Dunville did get one on the power play, I'm not 100 percent sure. I'll have to. What that second goal? Yeah, I, that was. I don't know if that was on the power play or not. It might have been, but uh, exactly, it was not even really a goal. So yeah, yeah. As as you guys would have saw in the highlight package, uh, we'll we'll go through the score sheet quick. Uh, break down the scoring. So first period, Thunder newcomer, brand new signing, Andrew Whalen, number 23. He'll be wearing 23. Um, until they figure out numbering. Um, as I said, there were some guys sharing numbers in that game. It's just that happens when you go on the road. You don't know who's going to make it or not. You're going to share numbers. Uh, Andrew Whalen comes in. Yeah. First period, seven and a half minutes in. Snipes a beauty of a shot. And, Leaf, you were there. The Dunville goaltender, um, what's his name again? Um, Shuaman, I want to say. Yeah, yeah. He was stellar in the first oh, period. Yeah, he was unreal. He was all over the place. And yeah. Whalen had his number. I don't know what it was. Quick release. Uh, some kind of sh shoulder fake. He had him, yeah. and he beat him in the first period. That was assisted by Mitch Fitzmorris and Chris Knotts. Um, and uh, Knotts, again, off to a great start this season. Uh, another helper. Uh, he's doing what he needs to do defensively and also doing what we know he can do offensively. Notter, you're having a great start to the year, buddy. We're really happy to see it. But, yeah, Fitzmorris and Knotts assist Whalen's goal at 724. So that gets us to the end of the first period, and it was – uh, one of those feelings that we had as fans that this game could go either way, right? You get yeah. to the end of the first, it's one nothing. You know you're the better team on paper. But in the Western Ontario Super Hockey League, anything can happen. So, yeah. you know, if Dunville gets a quick goal, you know, who, who knows what happens. But anyway, uh, that was how that went. And then the second period, we open up and we got a quick strike from a familiar face that we just talked about, Andrew Whalen. Again, yeah. his second of the game, uh, another absolute beauty of a goal. Makes it 2 nothing Thunder. Uh, that was assisted by Mitch Fitzmorris again. Yeah. And Spencer Hutchison, another new guy. Love Hutch. Great player. Good effort. Uh, seems like a, a really well-rounded forward. He's a two-way guy. Plays the two-way game. Yeah. Picked up an assist on Whalen's second goal. And then uh, the guy with the GWG beside his goal. What a surprise. Uh, on an absolute beauty of a shot to make it 3 nothing. Yours truly, not me, but Mr. Jamie McQueen. 95, Lightning McQueen, whatever you want to say. Uh, I know we know some people that are wearing Lightning McQueen Crocs right now in honor of Jamie. Uh, true. <laughs> very, very true. Jamie, uh, it was a beautiful shot. Uh, it was it was just well set up, and that made it 3 to nothing Thunder. So as Thunder fans at that point, we were thinking, you know, here we go, 3 nothing. We got, we got this going. And then uh, I believe it was 15 seconds later, Matt Dolan got the first, and what we would say is the only, but I know we're, we're going to get into fights with fans, and people are going to argue that it was... I saw where I went with that. People are going to argue that it was Wall 6-2 on the score sheet. doesn't matter. I'll shut up about it until we get to that goal. Matt Dolan, that was a good goal. It actually counted. It was a beauty, actually. Uh, 15 one so as I said, about 16 seconds, 17 seconds after... McQueen made it 3 nothing. We were doing the Let's Go Thunder chant, and then they came down and scored. And it was good to see the energy of their fans pick up because they were mad at us for cheering, and it's natural. You're invading enemy territory. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they, while we were still chanting, it was uh, Matt Dolan picking up his first of the year, and it was assisted by Curtis Longland and Tom Longland. So the two brothers 
picking up the assist on the goal by Matt Dolan. So it was 3-1. to one. And then we ticked down to near the end of the period and the Thunder would be on the power play. And uh, everybody's favorite chef, a guy who is a beautiful specimen of a human being but an even better hockey player, Mr. Brandon Kudo, makes it 4-1 on the power play, assisted by his good buddy Sheldon Thompson and the aforementioned Jamie McQueen. Yep. Those three guys, I'm just telling everybody right now, be on notice, Western Ontario Super Hockey League. When those three guys are out there, you're not going to stop them. You're not going to stop them. You can try, but you will not stop McQueen, Thompson, and Kudo. So that's how we closed out the second a power play goal leaf. Uh, first two periods, pretty straightforward. I thought they went as we expected. Yeah. And, yeah, the Thunder pulled away 4-1. So it kind of set us up as fans with the expectations of the third. Put your foot on the gas, maybe get one or two more, and try to lock down defensively, and the Thunder did exactly that. So 10 minutes into the third, Sheldon Thompson. Uh, it was a two-on-one, and by the way, it was a shorthanded goal. The Thompson and Kudo duo on the penalty kill has been incredible so far this season. Yep. Uh, it was a brief dispossession at the point. Uh, and it reminds me very similarly of Thompson's goal in Woodstock. Just it was Kudo flying up the wing, yeah. fed it across ice. As I said, shorthanded goal. Uh, Thompson just went hard to the net, stick down, bang, taps it in. 5-1, we're on our feet, we're fired up. And then uh, 8:43, it is listed as a power play goal, as I said. So that does break officially the Thunder's penalty killing streak. But Riley Ricker uh, gets his first of the season. Uh, on an interesting play, and this is going to be a talking point for us for a few minutes here. Um, yeah. So, we're both goalies, uh, or we like to think we are. We're not as good as any of the guys in this league, obviously, because I'd be playing in this league if I was good enough. Um, and same with you. I'm not old enough. I uh, know, he's not good enough either. Uh, <laughs> sorry to crush the dream, kiddo, but you can try out for the Thunder next year. But anyway, we had a lot of appreciation. Andrew, uh, Andre Wa, sorry, uh, or Roy. Uh, depends on if you want the French-Canadian pronunciation or uh, the English pronunciation. Regardless, he played a great game. He was standing on his head. It's not like Dunville didn't have their chances, dude. Like Dunville played a good game for a team that was playing arguably the best team in the league. First time seeing them. I get it, it was in front of home fans, so you get a little bit of extra motivation. But Andre uh, came in, and he, and he really did hold down the fort. Um, and then, yeah, the third period comes, and there's a weird play. Uh, the really big tall guy, I can't remember his name. I think his name's on the score sheet. Um, uh, he was number 89, I want to say. Uh, he was a big boy. He was, yeah, he was, he was a good player. Um, he was a good player. He dumps it in. It hits the back wall and then ricochets towards the net. And Andre was kind of in between. He was thinking about going RVH on the post or just standing up and trying to play the puck. Well, it took a weird bounce. So he decided to stand up and try to play it away. And it bounced. It went through his legs. He's facing the net itself. He turns around. He sprawls out. And he makes the save. The puck went off of his pad and laid under his body where he covered it. And we all were like, what a stop. And then the ref's pointing goal. So, interesting situation. Um, there are certain excuses that can be made at this point. Referee saw the net come off. Maybe he thought that was the puck entering. Maybe the skate, because it's black. Maybe he thought it was in the net. When you see, I don't care what level of hockey you are, when you see, when you go to the net after calling it a goal, and your linesmen come up to you, and they even tell you, hey, man, I don't know about that one, and you see the goaltender covering the puck under his pad after he made the save, and it wasn't like his leg was in the net. No. He sprawled out. It hit underarm and then went to the pad and he just put his hand down and he covered it and you can watch it on the replay you can zoom in 10 times you can do whatever you want yep. that puck did not cross the goal line at any point and it was honestly a terrible call i can say that and i, I apologize to the western ontario super hockey league if they want to be upset with me for criticizing officiating i don't criticize officiating unless it's deserved and i know these guys are are they're working nine to five jobs and and, and refereeing games in junior C and, and also, you know, like minor hockey. But if you're if, if we are at the level that this league is, because we know, we watch it, this, this is professional hockey. We have no slag on this hockey. Even the worst teams, the Woodstocks and, and the Orangevilles, could beat up on certain teams that you would say are, you know, good travel teams. Like, they're senior hockey. These guys, they're guys, they're guys in this league that have played professional hockey. 
paid money to play hockey. Not paying, they are being paid to play hockey for several years in the American Hockey League, the East Coast Hockey League, in Junior A, Canadian University Hockey, NCAA Hockey, sometimes a combination of all of those things. Look at how many OHL guys we have on the Thunder. This cannot happen because, sure, it's a 5-1 game. Who gives a damn? It's not that big of a deal. Well, if you're Andre, I'm pissed off, first of all, because I saved the puck. You're going to shake it off. You got the win. You had an over 900 save percentage. Uh, he still played excellent either way. But this cannot happen because imagine this is game seven of the second round of the playoffs in Stratford. And the Irish uh, are playing, uh, let's say, Alvinston. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <clears throat> Irish are up. It's a tie game. It's 1-1. Whatever. Third period. Here comes this guy down the wing. Oh, a weird bounce. Takes the shoot. Comes out in front. Shot on goal. Oh, it's a goal. And the Stratford Fighting Irish, arguably the best team in the league, go on to lose because of a call like this when the puck clearly never crossed the line. How do you think Mr. Jamie Petrie would feel about that? Because he's an executive in this league, as is our general manager, Bill Ryan. And Bill's not going to be public. Bill's not going to say anything. He doesn't care. Or so you would think. But situations like this can't happen because I get it. Dunville, it's the first year in the league. they got to get officials locally. It's not like this is some kind of homerism. Um, but it was very, 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 very questionable. And I don't care if people call me a whiner or a homer, whatever you want to call me. Look, I'm a Packers fan and a Flyers fan, okay? <laughs> well, that's the two fan bases in the NHL and the NFL that whine about the refs the most. So get used to it, okay? But when a puck doesn't cross the line... It should not be called the goal. Clean that up. <laughs> Because, as I said, this is just a 5-1 game early on in the season. It didn't cost the Thunder two points. It didn't gain Dunville two points unjustly. What it did was just piss people off. True. Because their fans started lipping. Our fans started lipping. It was not a good scene. Referees control a majority of the game in terms of what's on the ice and even what's off the ice. If you're getting unfavorable calls or goals called that never cross the goal line, it's going to piss people off. Yep. So... Mr. Official, I don't know your name. I apologize. It wasn't a terribly officiated game, penalty-wise. There were some tic-tac calls both ways. But this call, that kind of stuff, it has to be cleaned up. Can't happen in this league. This is professional hockey. If we're talking about going to the Eastern Ontario versus the Western Ontario, to have the OSHL uh, championship series, do you want to see uh, uh, a provincial championship game decided by a puck that never crossed the goal line? No. Probably not. So... Let's just clean stuff up. Uh, overall, good game. I really enjoyed it. Justin Abraham enjoyed it even more than me because uh, he scored the empty netter. Uh, and according to him, he wasn't even shooting for the net. He just wanted to get it out. Uh, 47 seconds left, and it was a shorthanded goal. So, another shorty for the Thunder. And I, they feel like a freaking NHL video game team just putting up, racking up the shorthanded goals, um, even though it was an empty netter. And, I mean, he just fired it down the ice. It was. It is what it is. Uh, yeah, Abraham assisted by Thompson. So, uh, again, Thompson, great game. Uh, uh, he had a couple helpers and a goal. And, yeah, I mean, sorry we went on that little rant about yeah. the officiating. I'm not sitting here complaining, oh, you guys called a bunch of penalties against the Thunder. That's never going to happen, okay? It's senior men's hockey. Guys slash, guys hack, guys get tripped. Yes. Crap happens. I yeah. get it. My point is, with that whole rant was, Let's clean it up. I don't want to see this kind of stuff happening in this league because those are things that contributed to the leagues such as the WOA falling apart. Was inconsistent officiating, inconsistent situations like this. Guys that didn't give a crap. And this league gives a crap. We saw, look at the, I don't know if you saw it. Um, uh, what's his name? Lachine, the referee, in, <coughs> excuse me, in Stratford. They did a, a 519 Sports did a mic'd up for the ref in Stratford. It was awesome, dude. That's where this league's heading. We're heading in the direction of taking over this province in terms of senior hockey. And when you have a ref getting mic'd up and he's dancing and he's singing and he's telling guys to learn how to play hockey, <laughs> that's amazing. That's the kind of stuff we need to see. We don't need to see officials calling goals that never even sniffed going in the net. That's your angry goaltender rant. Final score, 6-2 to two for the Thunder. <laughs> Let's go, Thunder. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. Let's, Let's clean it up, Leaf. Yeah. Yeah. How about you clean up those uh, those fights? Let's talk about it. Yeah. So, um, which ones do you want to talk about? A couple. The ones, the um, ones in the game or the ones in the stands. Well, first thing I want to talk about is 
And just so everybody knows, there was no physical fights in the stands. Leafs just being Leaf. <laughs> First thing I want to go over is the three stars of the game. Oh, yeah, you did absolutely. it. La- oh, wait. There's actually one more thing we have to do, buddy. We have to look at score predictions. We I, did a score prediction last week. Oh, did we? I don't even know what I predicted. I got it right here. Oh, you did? Oh, score sweet. predictions. Final score of the game was 6-2. to two. Trey. Yours truly predicted Tilsonburg 7, Dunville 3. Oh, yeah. Leaf predicted Tilsonburg 8, Dunville 2. So, I mean, we're both kind of there. We both expected this. Um, yeah, Thunder, Thunder didn't disappoint me. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I either of us. Uh, we were both pretty close on that one. Yeah, I was uh, that close. But yeah, 8-2, uh, and I went 7-3. I'm sorry to Andre or Sags, whoever would have been in net. I didn't know at the time. Uh, I doubted you guys to the point of giving up three goals, and it didn't happen. Uh, I'm just, I'm just joking around. Uh, it was, it was a good game. Uh, we predicted it pretty close to what it would be. Um, yeah. And again, if you fans, fans out there of any team, if you hate us, email us. If you love us, email us. If you, if you want to say, I think you should talk about this next week, email us. We have the email posted. At the bottom of the videos after they release in the description, uh, well, they will be now. Oh, okay. Perfect. I've also, I've also posted the uh, vi- the email on Facebook as well. It's Thunder Hour Podcast at gmail.com. Pretty straightforward. That is very basic. That's your main feedback line. Email us to the podcast. Let us know. Maybe maybe you're a Tilsonburg fan and you have a prediction for this week's game. We will review your email and, and we'll talk about it. We'll shout you out as long as you give us a name. Uh, and what fan of what team you are, whatever. Or you can stay anonymous. Yeah, you can stay anonymous if, if your name is Leaf Dietrich instead yeah, exactly. of Dietrich. Exactly. I mean, there's ways to do it. But yeah, yeah. Send, send us your feedback. Even if you want to send us an email and say, I hate you guys, that's fine. We're, we're all for we'll it. We'll you out too. Yeah, no exactly. We want, we want the engagement with the fans. This is what we do it for. Uh, you guys have been awesome. Those who have watched the podcasts, oh, we're yeah. creeping up to 200 plus views on every video we've had except one. Uh, which is weird because it was with Bill and Mike. I figured a lot of people want to watch it, but I don't know. One of the two of you ruined that. I'm just kidding, Bill and Mike. You guys do a great job. I agree. Um, but, yeah, we're we are here for the fan engagement. If you guys want to make predictions, like, for example, we're playing Tilbury tomorrow as of the recording time. Well, it'll be today after the podcast is released. What's your, what's your thoughts? You know, if you're a big Thunder fan, if you're Troy and you're out in Tilsonburg and you're like, you know, I think the Thunder are going to give it to them, send us an email. If you're in Tilbury and uh, like Mark Moffat, uh, I see you on on the Facebook. If you if you want to say I think Tilbury's going to give Tilsonburg a good ride, we'll go five three Tilbury. Shout us out, send us the email. We'll pass that on. We'll let the fans know this is an engagement type of show. Yeah. We want the people to enjoy it as much as we enjoy doing it. And I mean, just based on likes and and views and stuff, you guys are enjoying it genuinely so far. So this is a good way to get engaged even further. Thunder Hour Podcast, we'll put it uh, at the bottom of the screen, uh, I don't know which mic I'll point at, down there somewhere, it'll scroll across the bottom or just flash quick, Thunder Hour Podcast, he he's mad because he has to put it in, <laughs> welcome to being the producer, Thunder Hour Podcast at gmail.com, as run of the mill as your dad's old AOL email address he had back in 2005, sure. which is a shout out to my dad because he still has AOL email, so I, I was like, I didn't even know that existed, dude, like, <laughs> my mom still has hot mail. Hotmail. That was the old, yeah. That was the old one with the messenger thing and like the little emojis before emojis and all that stuff. That was so cool. We are older than some, but not as old as others. I guess is the best way to put it. Because I'm sure there's some of you that still remember typing on a typewriter. So um, I've done that too. It's because he's old. He's 60, <laughs> 64 year old Leaf Dietrich over here. Here we are. Yeah, sorry to go on that little side yeah. rant, but yeah. we're talking about the three stars of the game. Oh, yeah, the three stars. I got them right here. Oh. Third star of the game, the goaltender, Andre. Yeah, uh, Sagra? Oh, sorry. Wow. <laughs> I'm kidding. Leaf I'm isn't kidding. kidding. He just totally messed that up. <laughs> he, he was there, and he didn't even realize Sags wasn't playing, but that's how good Andre played is By that we way. thought it was Sags. Sags, Sags new setup. Yeah, Sags does have a nice new setup. We just anyway, need to get him on anyway, the jersey. Three stars. Three stars. Three stars of the game. Third star of the game. Goaltender, Andre, Wa, uh, Roy. I apologize, Andre. I just uh, I have French Canadian in game. my bloodline. What a game! Good, good one, Leaf. Andre, you played great, man. It was great to watch you. Uh, and we're out here fighting for you on this podcast by yelling at the officiating because we know you saved that puck. 
You know you saved that puck. Eb didn't know you saved that puck. Dunville knew you saved that puck. Anyway, great game, Andre. Uh, you deserve that third star. Congrats, buddy. Second star of the game for your Thunder, number 16, Mitch Fitzmorris. You pronounced it right. I did because it's and very confusing. Why is he the second star of the game? He has three assists and a fight. Uh, three helpers in any game is a good game. Uh, it's funny, Mitch, just a quick shout-out. Chatting with your dad the other day. Um, he was telling me that uh, if you just shot the puck more, you'd be a 40-goal scorer. So maybe take some advice from the old man. I'm uh, just kidding. Three assists, Mitch. I'll take that any day. And the fight, um, you know, I, I you went in. You got hit hard. Mitch did. He got hit hard. He got up. He went over. He congratulated the guy. Nice hit. And then the gloves came off. So that's how it happens sometimes. Um, Mitch did a great job in that game. Three assists and a fight. Little side shout out before we get to the first star to Kudo and Thompson and McQueen. That whole line deserves a star every game. Um, but unfortunately, I'll have to skip over you guys today because we have our first star, <coughs> excuse me, Thunder newcomer, Andrew Whalen, two goals in his Thunder debut. Goals. Out of boy, Andrew Whalen. Coming over from the ACH, uh, great hockey player. I'm really excited to see what he does with the Thunder Leaf. Uh, that's your three stars. I agree. Uh, what do you think of the three stars? I don't choose the. I I choose the second and third star. The team chooses the first star. Um, okay. What do you, What do you think of that? I I like it. I think I think those uh, those are good choices. I uh, I don't disagree with them. I wouldn't change them. So I think I think they're pretty good. Wow! What a run of the mill opinion from Leaf Dietrich. The best, best producer in the game right here, ladies and gentlemen. Man um, of many words, I am. Yes, he is. That's why it's funny when you make a podcast with a guy who doesn't say a lot and you're a guy who doesn't shut the hell up. You know that people are going to be like, oh, that Trey guy doesn't shut up. That Leaf guy doesn't say enough. Listen, Leaf, he just doesn't say a lot in general. But you know what? When he wants to talk about the Thunder, he can talk about the Thunder. And or he does a great job. I talk, what I want to talk to Dunville fans. Okay, Mr. okay. Mr. Guy over there. Okay, so... <laughs> Third period, uh, five minutes and a bit left. Uh, Jamie McQueen in his own end tries a backhand flick around the wall. And a Dunville player comes up high. And I don't know if it was stick. I wasn't that paying attention to that situation. Uh, yeah, he gets either stick or arms up high on McQueen up in the throat area. <coughs> Jamie had a little bit of a battle scar on the face as well. So obviously... Not a clean hit. It happens. It just so happens to be the Thunder's best player, so you're always going to take it. It doesn't matter what level of hockey. I played in travel hockey in Tilsonburg locally, and when people would go after our best player, which was me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> when people would go after our best player, though, you would have to respond even at 11, 12 years old. Guys would come in and start cross-checking you and say, get out of here. Yep. So Brandon Barletta, one of our best defensemen, and a guy who doesn't care, he'll stand up for his teammates, especially the best player on the team. Yep. He stepped up, he dropped the gloves, the other guy dropped the gloves, and they went at it. It was a good scrap, it was a good tilt. Barletta ultimately won the fight because A, he was bigger, C, B, he was stronger, C, he's just a better fighter than the other guy. True. But don't throw a big hit like that up high if you're not willing to fight or know how to fight. Okay. So, he gets escorted off the ice, and this is our second fight of the game, so obviously the tensions are already high, and fans start yelling and screaming. At us and Barletta. So primarily start yelling at Barletta. Now, the story we got from it was that the guy was the father of the guy who got in the fight. Understandable. He's upset. His kid got the crap kicked out of him. Sure. Um, but he started throwing personal insults, and it was getting very non-PG. Um, and, yeah, so not very appreciated. I understand one guy doesn't represent all of Dunville. I thought Dunville fans actually were very civil. Yeah. Uh, even the kids that were 12, 13 years old sitting beside us, they were just chirping us lightly. Like, oh, yes. Oh, Bob, you know, oh, what a stop. Oh, yeah, that was a good pass. Like, if we turn it over, oh, yeah. that was a good pass. Like, that's that's civil. Yeah. That's that's what it's like even when we go to Tilbury, except for yeah. when the popcorn gets thrown in game seven. <laughs> but uh, that's a little shout-out to our boys coming on tonight, Jesse Raymond. Uh, fingers crossed, hopefully, we'll just see what happens technically. Um, but yeah, that situation, um, the guy started belittling this guy right here. Uh, Mike Hawley was there, our general manager. Uh, general, I'm sorry, Bill. Oh, man, that one is well, not forgivable. Our owner, Mike Hawley, was down in the tunnel. He got Leaf to control himself and just calm down. 
because the guy started getting personal, and 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 you never want to see stuff like that happen. But he was uh, he was uh, flipping me off in front of children. Yeah, Real and mature. being very very obnoxious with the language as well. He really wanted to fight me in the parking lot. Yeah, and this guy's this guy was just cheering for his team. That's what we don't like is when people start getting angry when you're cheering for your team. We don't get personal. I don't chirp at players unless they're dirty in a situation. Say say a guy throws a cheap shot. As the fans of that team that got cheap shotted, you're gonna stand up and say, "Get out of here." That's cool. natural. Watch how many. Uh, every guy that gets ejected at the Bell Center gets booed off the ice. And every time that a Canadian's player gets in a fight in the last three minutes of a period, and they escort you to the dressing room, they get a standing ovation. That's hockey. This is hockey. I'm trying to remind people of that. That, especially fans in other places that come to watch, cheer, be loud, yeah. be be passionate, because this is your local professional hockey team. Come and enjoy the game. Don't just sit there and sit on your butt with your hands crossed like this and, and drinking a coffee. If you want to do that, go ahead. You know the guys who I see doing that are executives. I see guys like Bill. He's sitting there and he's paying attention to the game. Why? He's the general manager of the team. He doesn't need to get up and cheer, but you know who does? People like us and people like you guys in Dunville. I expect more out of people in this league because there's environments, Strathroy, Tilbury, Petrolia, Tilsonburg, heck, even Delhi. The fans are engaged. They cheer. They get nuts. They get loud. That's how it should be. We've gone to other places where it's not like that. And there's nothing better than a Tilbury Tilsonburg game in Tilbury. We got a two and a, a bit hour drive, and yet there's dozens of Thunder fans and hundreds of Tilbury fans, and nobody gets in fights. Like I said, there's no, yeah. it's never physical. That whole Dunville situation was the first time we've witnessed somebody actually trying to fight us. Um, <clears throat> this guy, yeah, okay. <laughs> He thinks he's Ryan Miller because he's about the same weight. But anyway, uh, I, I love it when the fans are engaged. Like I said, even in Woodstock, there wasn't a lot of cheering. The fans cheer when they score. Wow, the guys on the ice want to hear you cheer for them. That's what you're there for. Why are you paying $10, $12, $15 to go and sit there and be quiet? And I'm not to judge you for what you do with your Saturdays and Friday nights, but this is pro hockey. Like, do we all want to be Maple Leaf Gardens or whatever you want to call it now, Scotiabank Arena, where it's a bunch of suits and ties that don't cheer and only people cheering are in the 300 level where you can barely hear them? No. This is local pro hockey. Go cheer for your team. When you come to Tilsonburg and you sit in the Thunderdome and you hear the drum and you hear the people and the music's bumping and the people are vibing, that's what we want to create all the way across this league. There are some teams up in the East, uh, Eastern League that have already started this. They do a great job of it. I wasn't too impressed with, uh, like I said, the engagement of the fans in our last two games in Woodstock and Dunville. Because if you watch the highlights of the Woodstock game, that was a Tilsonburg home game. That was not a Woodstock game. There, I was disappointed with the, we're going to come to your house, right, Leaf? Yeah. And we're going to cheer for our team. Go ahead. You have every right to do so. They didn't boo us. They didn't cheer for their own team. There was no, let's go arrows. The only time I heard a person saying, let's go arrows, it was a six-year-old girl on the glass. And nobody joined her. Yeah. That's that's ridiculous, dude. This is pro hockey. Cheer for your team, okay? We're both we both have worked long shifts. We're both tired. We're in a bit of a mood today, and we're having Jesse on the podcast. So you got to get geared up because you know he's a scrapper and he's a <laughs> he's he's an aggressive guy. So, but no, in all honesty, cheer for your team, please. That's all we ask from anybody in this league. Tilbury does a great job. Tilsonburg does a great job. Strathroy does a great job. I, like I said, even Delhi was more engaged. Woodstock, you're a city of fifty thousand people. You put maybe 250 people in that arena, but yeah, when I go see a Vets game, there's five, six hundred in there cheering. Oh, more like a thousand. Yeah, depending if it's playoffs. Yeah, and uh, come on, guys, this is pro hockey. This is senior men's pro hockey. You have players on your teams that have played high professional levels, way higher than junior C, and these other junior C cities that have teams barely pack the barn and they barely cheer. And we'll cut Dunville some slack and Woodstock. This is their first year in the league. I get it. It's gonna take time. But when you can drive down to Petrolia and it's more engaged than a place like Woodstock with 50,000, come on. Yeah. Somebody's got to figure it out. Get a horn, get a drum. That's how we got the Tilsonburg fans into the game. Yeah. It was a drum. We went and bought a $20 drum at Long and McQuaid. And yeah, we just started okay. saying, let's go Thunder. And that got, you had three, 400 people by the end, by the championship. We had Stratford fans in our arena with their drum. And we were going, let's go Thunder. Dun, 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 dun. And then you hear them. On the other side of the arena, let's go, Irish. Do you not think that the players on the ice, Leaf, are going to play better 
when they have the engagement of the fans behind them. And they do. That's the craziest part. Exactly. Wow. We saw a three-game, a complete reverse sweep, four-game comeback against Tilbury last year. And most of the guys on that team gave a lot of credit to the fans, not just me and him, the yeah. fans in general, for being there, going on the road, and being loud and supporting the guys. If you want your team to be successful, if you want to fire those guys up, give them extra motivation, I suggest you guys start getting loud. Because that's what these guys play hockey for. And when they don't hear you cheering, and they hear the other team's fans come in their building and start cheering, and you're doing nothing about it, and I don't mean get physical, don't try to fight us, because that's not what this is about. This is hockey, okay? The fighting happens on the ice. Leave us alone. Let us cheer for our team. We won't cross any lines. You don't cross any lines. But cheer back. That's all we're asking, okay? That's our little rant yeah. for today. Yeah. Now we got to hurry up and line up the, uh, yeah. the Tilbury Bluebirds game. No, we can keep going. Yeah, oh, we're going. We're going. Don't worry. Oh, yeah, we haven't even talked about Kyle Baker. Oh, yeah. Go oh, ahead, Leaf. What, what were your thoughts on Kyle Baker and his oh, uh, Thunder looked, debut? He looked uh, like he did with the Vets. Like I said, I'm very offensive-minded. He created something, like, every time he was on the ice. Mm -hmm. He reminds me so much of when I went two years ago and I watched Leafs versus um, Detroit, Mrazic's, like, season debut. And every time Matthews and Marner touched the puck, it was always, ooh, ah, mm -hmm. ooh, ah. And that's what I did with Baker. Same with, I just went to a Sabres game on Monday. Tate Thompson, same thing. Mm -hmm. I get the same thing, same feeling with Baker, same feeling with Thompson, same feeling with Kudo, mm -hmm. same feeling with McQueen. I like that feeling. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to go away. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're so skilled, man. Mm -hmm. And that's not even mentioning Whalen. That's not mentioning exactly. Hutchison. That's not mentioning Fitzmorris. There are, this team is skilled, man. And But just touching on Kyle Baker... Um, from from a fan's perspective, I really enjoyed his game. I, I thought I thought he fit in well, and yeah. uh, Ebden likes him. He was he had him on the power play for crying out loud. Um, that goes to show how much trust he has in him already. Uh, he's young. He's he's a little bit undersized in comparison to some guys in this league, but he could still. I mean, he could still. He, he could fly, man. Yeah. He could flat out fly. He can skate, and that was um, excuse me, that was one of the issues the Thunder had. Last, last year, year. Yeah, was, was we didn't have a ton of foot speed. Yeah. This year, we have Kudo, so Thompson, McQueen. Guys with foot speed. Like I said, you got Hutchison, you got Fitzmorris, you got you got now we got Baker, we got Forsyth, we got these young guys that are electric and they're fast, and that's what we needed in the off season. Bill Ryan, kudos to you, man. And that's yeah. not a that's not a little uh, pun with Kudo, but kudos to you, Bill. You did a great job recruiting this year. Uh, and I'm really excited to see what Kyle Baker does. I want to see a fourth line with Baker, and Baker can center it. He takes draws. He, he yeah, did pretty he well. He was about 50-50. Yeah. I want to see Baker with Slot or Geldart and and Forsyth. I want to see the two young guys with a with. A, uh, <laughs> back to Kyle Baker. Yes. Great game from Kyle. He wears number 77. Look out for him. Uh, I, I think he's a difference maker. I really like the signing. Oh, yeah. Hopefully he can make at least 15 to 20 games this year and make a difference. I agree. Mm -hmm. He could be a Washoe Rookie of the Year by, uh, if, he, if he keeps this up and if he's able to put points on the board. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as a true rookie, I mean, some guys are in their 30s and like yeah. making their debuts in this league. I mean, like a under 25, just just turned 21 oh, kind of guy, like right? So, type called their race. Oh, here we go. Uh, it's always got to be about the Leafs. Always, Joel Wall this, Michael Bunting this. Listen, listen, just enough, Leave Justin Hall this. I get it. Justin Hall, what? We had a lot of conversations about Justin Hall. Like, yeah, why is he in the, the lineup? They <laughs> got healthy scratch in Detroit. Oh, it's yeah, well, Justin you know, it's, now. it's Justin Hall. It happens. Uh, how about Rasmus Sandin? They'll let him go, eh? Uh, John Klickberg looks all right. So Leaf says... All right, so we're going to talk about the... Uh, oh, the game. Game this in Tilbury. Game. There's a game. Tilbury Bluebirds, Tilsonburg Thunder. Blueberries. Um, Tilbury Blueberries. Mm. I, I'm i very excited because this is a rivalry that is going to last for year. years. This is a rivalry that's going to last for years, man. Like oh, this yeah, is, 100%. This is... We, we don't like each other on the ice or off the ice. And like I said, it's not to the point of violence in the crowd. No. But... Absolutely. We really do not like each other. And uh, it started last year. 
Tilsonburg and Tilbury. Tilsonburg lost two games in the regular season to Tilbury. They did. Uh, Tilbury was the only team to beat Tilsonburg through the first 12 games of the year. Tilsonburg was 11-1. and one. That one loss was Tilbury. So, there's so many narratives we can go to here. Yeah. Tilbury's going to be angry. Go to. Tilbury's going to be angry from the semifinal. That's obvious. They want to lay a beat down on the Thunder. A lot of guys aren't on the Thunder that were on that team, right? So, there are many different angles here. But I think, overall, the way I see it, I think that I don't even know because there's so many ways this could go. Because Tilsonburg lost two games in the regular season to them last year. So they want revenge as well. Yeah. you got guys like McQueen and Thompson Kudo who have now gelled on this first line. And as I said, they score every time they're on the ice. Literally. But Tilbury has a first line of Denemy, Winkworth, and Sammy Benga. And they score every time they're on the ice. Oh, Benga. So, yeah, Sammy Benga, he's... Uh -huh. Yeah, go check his stats. He's a pretty dang good player. Um, Denemy's back. As I said, Winkworth, he's fast. He's not the greatest player in the league, but he's fast. He's, and He's quick. Oh, he's quick. He's scary. Oh, man, he's quick. We noticed last year he did lack in certain areas like back checking, um, which is going to piss whoever the coaching staff is <laughs> off, but he made up for it offensively because they had guys like Cravatin that were doing a lot of back checking, right? And and uh, Jennings was a great back checking forward. Um, yeah. But, yeah, Winkworth, that first line, Winkworth, Benga, Denemy, yeah, dude. And then we have, like I said, Thompson, Kudo, McQueen. I think this game, personally, I think they're going to cancel each other out. I think each line will get one or two goals. And I think that... Maybe four each. I think, okay, yeah, well, here he goes. Well, don't forget the goaltending is still Polidori versus Sagarat. That's, it's not easy to beat either of those but guys. in Tilbury. Yeah, bad sight lines for the bad goaltenders. We chatted with Sags dude. about that last, uh, last podcast. Interesting, um, but... I still think those two lines will cancel each other out, so one goal each, two goals each. Yeah. I think it's going to come down to power play and second line play. Probably. I think so, because depth-wise, these, these two are the two are the... Uh, deepest teams. These are two of the deepest teams, excuse me, in the Western Ontario Super Hockey League. Tilsonburg, Stra Stratford, and Tilbury, top three depth teams. And I, I think Stratford is actually up there this year. Yeah. And Petrolia is new, so we're still getting a feel for them, but I feel like when they're healthy... Those five are the best five teams. They look good, yeah. And I think the power rankings say that as well. Uh, Alora, they're, they're, they're hit or miss this year. It depends on who shows up, right? Like, exactly. they signed time again. He's not going to play this year. Uh, they signed this other NHLer this past week. Congratulations. He's an older guy. We'll see what kind of impact he has, right? Back to the tilbury Tilsonburg. I think if the second lines, depending on who shows up for each team, uh, I think the second lines will determine this game and the power plays will determine this game ultimately score-wise uh, yeah. because Tilsonburg's penalty kill is really good and last year Tilbury's penalty kill was really good. So it, it, we haven't watched Tilbury this year. I've heard from Andrew Rogers when they're healthy, when they're at full strength, they're right up there in the top four of this league with Tilsonburg, Petrolia, Stratford, and Tilbury. That's the top four in this league. That's solidified. Um, I, I, I'm really intrigued to see it. Uh, because, honestly, Leaf, the Thunder special teams has been a, a blessing and a curse for them for the last couple of years, right? And this year so far, we've been good on the power play and good on the penalty kill. So, barring on how many penalties we decide to take, because it's Tilsonburg and you never stink and know, yeah. and we know Tilbury's undisciplined as well, this could be a very much power play decided game. Can be. It probably will be. Mm -hmm. Probably going to be fights. Mm -hmm. Like... Every game last year. Mm -hmm. um, probably going to be a lot of goals. Mm -hmm. And that, that's all I got. Yeah, that's Leafs' basic rundown of the game. Fighting, yeah. goals, <laughs> and some saves. And some saves. Potentially. Maybe a, cool, oh my a couple God. of goalie changes. I really hope not. I want to I, I I see a 3-2 game in Tilbury. You won't see that. Listen, let my wishes come true. You're going to see a 7-5 final. It's my birthday. I make the wishes here. Let me blow out the candles on this cake. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm excited, man. Either way, let's just uh, look at the stats a little bit here. Oh, yeah, um, the stats. By the way, stats. it's... In Tilbury at Tilbury Arena, 7.30 p.m. puck drop. Uh, so if you can't make it to the game, which that's a long drive, understandable, uh, the link will be on Sporfy. You can go to the Tilsonburg Thunder website and click Watch Games here, and it will bring you to the Washoe Live page, and there will be a link 
in there for, and we'll probably put a, put a link for that in here as well. Um, sorry, Leaf, I'm trying to keep you here all night. Even though we have a softball tournament at 8 a.m. tomorrow. No, I'm just talking, if you go on the live broadcast, you might hear this guy's voice again. Possible. Andrew Rogers still is not confirmed with me, and it's Friday. Um, oh, well. We might well. do a road broadcast. He'll be the broadcaster. I'll be the color commentator. Still not 100% set in stone. He might go to Alvinston, uh, a couple other spots. Uh, it's Andrew who chooses the game of the week, and he goes to that game. If he does choose Tilbury, I might be on the broadcast. And it will be a league-wide broadcast, not a Tilbury or a Tilsonburg broadcast. So you won't be hearing me with all my Homer opinions like I have here on Thunder Hour. Because um, I can keep it professional despite what the popular opinion is sometimes. Um, professional. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> I know exactly who you're talking about. All right, so season... Adventure. The, anyway. Wow. The road so far... <laughs> luckily, she doesn't watch the podcast. I... <laughs> But this episode, never know. The road so far. Anyway. Tilsonburg, starting off the season 3-0-0. I like that. We Man, won at lost. home. We won at home. Really? 5-3 over Petrolia. We went on the road. Oh. We beat Woodstock 7-2, and we beat Dunville 6-2. At home? at home in Woodstock? Yeah, well, it was a home game. <laughs> Let's be honest here. On the stat sheet, on the score sheet, it might have looked like a road game, but in the crowd, it was definitely a home game. Um, so yeah, Tilsonburg 3 0 0. We beat Petrolia Woodstock Dunville. Yes. Switch over to Tilbury. They started off their season at home against Dunville. Lost 6 4. Now, in chats with Bill Ryan and others, including Andrew Rogers, Tilbury wasn't all there. Right. No, not everybody was there. I don't even think Polidori was there. Uh, mm -hmm. I know Bengo wasn't there. Um, so not a hundred percent squad, right? It's early yeah. in the season. I don't think Tilbury even played a preseason game. They're too far away from anybody to actually have a preseason game. Yeah. Um, six four loss. Good for Dunville. First first win of the year. They played their hearts out. They were fired up. They were extra motivated. Um, but yeah, six four loss. And then they switch it up. They go and play Orangeville. And the Blitz are just not a great team this year. We haven't even really talked about the Blitz much because there's not much to talk about. They didn't put together the best product on the ice this year. It's going to be a tough year. They're going to have to try to rebuild and steal some guys from Alora or whatever they do up there. Um, but they looked better in Aaron last year, to be honest with you. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Guys like Jeff White leaving, guys like Andre coming to us, you know, tough situation. But yeah. Orangeville, they beat Orangeville 7-2, to two, and then they played Strathroy. Strathroy, at the time was listed as the number one team on the power rankings. Andrew Rogers was really high on them. I was too. And Tilbury went in and beat them 7-4. So Tilbury's legit. There's no questioning that. Um, yeah. And they're motivated. They're angry. Uh, you know, like I said, they've they've put, they've put scored a lot of goals. Yeah. They have played a couple weaker teams, but Strasbourg is still a good team, and they kicked the crap out of them. So yeah. um, I, I wouldn't say kick the crap. It was a close game near the end, an empty net or whatever. Uh, but they went on the road and they beat them in Strathroy, which is a tough building to win in. The fans are right above your bench, so you know all game you're hearing it from them. We were, that was the uh, <laughs> site of the na 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 hey hey goodbye. Um, that was a great memories. Um, let's not get too uh, far off track here. True. Yep, yeah, Tilbury True. beat Strathroy 7 4 in their last game, so that lines us up with this game. Tilsonburg 3 0 0, the only undefeated team left in the league. And also the only team in the league to not surrender 10 or more goals against. So Sagrat and Andre, great start to the year. But uh, Tilbury's going to be a tough test, man. And why is that? Is there, uh, is there players to watch out for on Tilbury? Yeah, their whole that first line. Oh, why don't you name the three guys that I already I said? I can't pronounce names. We got Sammy Benga, heck of a hockey player here. Let's go on Hockey DB quick and... Okay. Let's pull up on our PC here. On our PC. I say that like I own this thing. It's mine. Um, yeah. Uh, hockey it's DB mine. and Sammy Benga. But yeah, he is a heck of a hockey player, dude. I really hope your hockeys aren't going off. Uh, I might be Benga or Benga. Not 100% sure. Uh, junior Spitfires, 52 points in 35 games in U18 AAA. Okay, that, is, <laughs> that says enough right there. 15 games. In the playoffs, and he had 19 points, nine goals, 10 assists. Uh, he went to the LaSalle Vipers of the GOJ, best junior B hockey league in the world. 
Uh, he was uh, 71 points in 49 games, and then he went to the OJ, the best junior A hockey league in Canada, uh, outside of Alberta, more than likely, and he put up 57 points in 49 games with the Waxers, uh, you know, like Stephen Stamkos, Connor McDavid, uh, Markham Waxers, like... <laughs> Um, okay. Trenton Golden Hawks, and then he went straight to. He did not play in the OHL, uh, but he went straight to Brock University. Uh, he was a point per game guy with the Badgers, and then he signed a contract with the Norfolk Admirals, and he ended up playing two games in the ECHL. He did not register a point in those two games, but he was a good player regardless. And uh, there was chats about him potentially coming to Tilbury last year, um, and it didn't happen. But he was. For 2018 and 19, he played in the AIHL, which is the Australian Professional Hockey League, uh, and he put up 66 points in 28 games um, uh, with Newcastle North Stars. Uh, I've seen a few teams in that league uh, be all over social media, Melbourne Ice being one of them. Uh, yeah, if you're a fan of this league, check out the AIHL. They're a good league. Uh, shout out to them. Sammy Benga comes from that uh System that was his first professional hockey outside of playing for the Admirals uh, in the ECHL. So he is an ECHL veteran, regardless. He's only played two games, but still better than any of us can say. I play Friday nights at Woodstock Reeves Arena as a pickup player, so I can't say much. Yeah, yeah Tilbury, Bluebirds, uh, as you can see right there, leave three games, five goals, two assists, um, which I do stand corrected on the Benga not being there um, for the first game because they have played three games, so he must have been there for all three. Uh, Bluebirds, he's their leading scorer uh, alongside Dylan Denemy, who, by the way, led the league's led the league in goal scoring last year, and he has no goals so far. Uh, Denemy's turning into a playmaker. Um, How would you say that? I apologize to Sags, but uh, <laughs> or Andre. Uh, but yeah, here's the roster for the Bluebirds and the score sheets so far. Uh, the usual names of Denemy, Winkworth, Jennings, uh, Winter, Van Teeling. These are guys we saw last year, Cravatin. Uh, other than that, I do not see names that I have recognized. Uh, of course, other than the goaltending side of things, because they still have Palladori and Swan Marison. Uh, Matt Anthony is the backup on record. Uh, he played the first game of the season when Palladori wasn't there. He gave up uh, the six goals to Dunville. Uh, Palladori, though, 921 save percentage, three goals against. He's a great freaking goalie. He obviously yeah. injured himself, unfortunately, last year. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, guys to look out for. Benga, Denemy, Winkworth, that's their first line. Um, I believe Denemy centers that line. Benga would be a left wing, and Winkworth would be right wing, depending on the handedness. I'm not 100% sure. Let me just double-check that. Uh, uh, Travis Winkworth is a left-handed shot, so he would be the left winger more than likely on that line. Again, a guy who played uh, junior B hockey. 50 goal, 50 games, 60 points in 2009-10. He stayed away from hockey until the Bluebirds were uh, conceived, and he appears to be a very good hockey player. He was under the skin of Thunder fans quite a bit last year, to be honest with you. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, he's a he's a heck of a hockey player. Doesn't have the A on his jersey this year. It says on here, but I don't know yet. Uh, Elite prospects doesn't update and stuff like that right away. Uh, but yeah, 39 points in 24 games last year. He played every game for Tilbury. He has already missed one game this year, but uh, obviously work constraints, things like that. Yeah. And then we'll just uh, slide over. I know I didn't uh, display capture this, but uh, we'll figure it out. Just for the fans wondering, we're on bleakprospects.com. Best should probably, website. should probably make sure that... Uh Oh, yes, it's still recording. That, that red dot right there uh, shows that it's actually only recording me. Yeah, Interesting. Because you probably hit the hotkeys. I hit the hotkeys. Oh, and I said no. That. And I said that earlier. But well, oh. hopefully we didn't go black screen there. But if we did, we'll just uh, throw in a quick clip of... <laughs> I'm just trying to piss this guy off. Uh, I uh, forgot. Right, what are I going to do? I, I apologize. I forgot about the hotkeys, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. But, uh, yeah, Dylan Denemy was the last guy we're going to look at quick before we touch on the Thunder. Uh, and, again, Elite Prospects, shout out to them. Great website. They track the Western Ontario Super Hockey League to a T. I love the website. They're very interesting. Uh, Dylan Denemy, uh, he is born and raised in Riverside, Ontario. He's listed at 6 feet, 230. He's a big dude. Scary guy. You don't want to mess with him. I would not talk crap to him, that's for sure. Again, part of that Junior Spitfires AAA program in 2009. 40 points in 35 games, 99 penalty minutes. Uh, he went straight to LaSalle, uh, which a lot of guys out there do for the GOJ. 
uh, 29 points in 50 games, and then he became a stud. 2012-13, 76 points in 50 games. And then he actually made the trip out to BC and played uh, for the Nanaimo Clippers in the BCHL before returning back to LaSalle that same year. He just wanted to get a few games under his belt out west. Different look. Um, and he went to the University of Windsor. He was a Lancer. Uh, he was an alternate captain. And then that's when he made the trip down to the SPHL. Uh, he also played a year in France uh, with the uh, Ligue uh, Magnus, I want to say. Um, he played in the relegation playoffs there as well. Uh, and then retired from the SPHL in 2019-20. He was still a point-per-game guy in the SP, which is professional hockey. And then he came to Tilbury last year. And he put up 50 points in 18 games, and he's already got seven so far this year. So yeah. uh, Dylan Denemy, a difference maker, a really good hockey player. Um, I mean... Okay. As, as a fan of this team, I want to see the Thunder do well, but a guy like Denny might get in the way of that, right? So, yep. Um, but yeah, let's let's talk about our predictions, uh, okay. and then we'll close off the show talking about the power rankings by Andrew Rogers. Yeah. And uh, I am not one hundred percent sure if we're going to actually have Razor on this week. I apologize for mentioning it earlier; it might not happen, uh, time constraint wise. Um, but yeah, we're at an hour already as our recording stands right now, so. Uh, we're going to plan uh, the planned guests, guys, players, if you're listening. We got Mike Redbury, number one, our captain, uh, but he's busy. He's got his yeah. hockey school. Shout out to Mike Redbury Hockey uh, in Tilsonburg. If you're a, a resident of Tilsonburg or the surrounding area, Delhi, whatever, um, yeah. uh, Simcoe, Mike Redbury is a heart and soul guy. He puts a wonderful product on the ice and he is a never say die player. And if you want your young hockey player in your family, your child to learn that same mentality, I definitely highly recommend checking out Mike's hockey school. Uh, check him out on Facebook as well. When you're at Thunder Games, uh, we'll be doing a few chats with people who might be interested on his behalf um, for, as I said, Mike Redbury hockey. Um, Yep. He is a great guy. I really enjoy being around Mike. He's a heart and soul guy. He's a character guy. And as I said, he's running a hockey school in Tilsonburg. So uh, if you're looking to help carry your kid to that next level, some guys just say they do it. I know guys like Redbury, McQueen, and McGuffin that uh, have hockey schools in this area. They are legitimate, and yeah. they get the job done. I've noticed improvements from many. I mean, I'm pretty sure uh, you're somebody close to you. I think he went out to a level-up session and uh, I'm pretty sure he, he definitely showed improvements just from one or two sessions. So, shout out Mike Redbury Hockey. But Rebs is our number one guest we want to have uh, unavailable this week. We're going to touch base with Andrew Rogers, uh, who had me on his show. Uh, we're going to do a little league-wide recap, chat about how things are going around the league, how Andrew's doing personally. Yeah. And uh, Jesse Raymond, our goaltender, uh, who carried us last year in the Tilbury series. We want to have Razor on. He's a great guy. He's a laugh. Always have a great time with Razor. Yeah. Justin Abraham, uh, absolute stud, exactly. defenseman, throws the weight around. Always jokes about nobody wants to fight him. So <laughs> if uh, you play for Tilbury and you want to fight somebody, I heard number 12 is looking. Um, sorry, Bill, I don't want to get your guys in trouble. Um, also, our fifth and final mentioned guest before we head uh, to our final part of the show. Leaf Teacher. <laughs> Big Ham the Mover. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Shout out Mackie Moving. Best in the in the town, although he's not allowed to make an opinion on that. Okay. Um, if you're in Woodstock and you need to move, I know Mackie moving gets it done every Perfect, yeah. single anyway. time. Um, our fifth and final guest we're looking to have on the podcast is head coach Sean Ebden. Yes. Uh, Ebden's a busy guy too. We're all busy. That's the thing. Doing something like this, you know, we don't have the time of of a Bob McCowan or a Jeff Blair and Kevin Barker. Uh, we don't get paid to do this. We're just doing it for fun. We're just a couple buddies that like to talk about hockey. So. Um, yeah, shout out to those guys. They're going to be on the podcast as soon as possible. Yes. If you, the fans, have any suggestions or maybe even want to come on the podcast for yeah. a little 10 minute interview yeah. with us, if you're a diehard Thunder fan and you love this team and you want to chat with us, if you got Zoom, we're down to do it. So, True. Um, yeah, that, that's going to be that. We're going to we're gonna move forward here to our game predictions and then talk about the power rankings and close yes. out for the night. Yes. I am predicting. I stand tall on my prediction. I'm sorry to Thunder fans. I hope I don't piss you guys off. I'm going Tilbury 5, Tilsonburg 4. And I predict Dylan Denemy a late goal his first of the season to win the game on the power play in the third period. 
That's my prediction. I think Tilbury's yeah. got a lot on their plate. I think that they're pissed off. I think Polidori's pissed off. He got injured in that series. And essentially playing through Game 7 cost his team that game because if he was not playing that game as injured as he was, we jumped out to that early lead because he was injured. Sure. Um, I think that's going to be personal, and I think it's in Tilbury. It's loud. They Their fans actually cheer for them. They actually say, let's go Bluebirds, <coughs> Woodstock. Um, it's always Woodstock. It really is. Um, we love you, Jeff Zare. Don't worry, man. We're just having some fun here. Um, but yeah, yeah, I go Tilbury 5, Tilsburg 4. Leaf, what do you got? I got uh, Tilsburg 7, Tilbury 5. Said it early in the show. I just stand by it. Mm. I think, uh, like, these two offenses, they score a lot of goals. Yes, sir. No offense to either goalies of either teams or whatever. These guys put the puck in the net, and especially in Tilbury with the sight lines and everything, I I don't know. I think this is going to be a high-scoring game. It's obviously going to be physical because mm-hmm. it's a rival game mm-hmm. now. So I think this will be a good game too. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, that's Leaf. All right, Leaf 7-5, smacking the desk. Sorry to the fans listening. Nope. That's going to be annoying. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I, It could go either way. That's the nice thing is that this is – so, nice hockey. Petrolia was at 80% of their usual team. They had Pauly, they had Wright, they were missing a couple guys, but it wasn't a full-on full matchup. Tulsaberg had a full roster, opening night, fans are cheering, saluting the guys. Um, so, you can take that with a grain of salt. To, to all, Petrolia did play two games prior to that game, so they were already there. Uh, they had already played a couple games. Tilsonburg, other than that, has played two teams that they should beat. This is the first team I see us potentially losing to. Potentially. But with how good our offense is and if our penalty kill can hold their own, because as I said before in the show, this is going to come down to special teams. It will. If we can hold Tilbury's power play to maybe one goal and hold that Denemy line to maybe one goal and let McQueen and Kudo and Thompson do their thing. Because here's another thing I forgot to mention. Defensively. We know we're without, for sure, Brandon Barletta. Suspension for one game for the fight within the last 10 minutes. So, defensively, what are we going to look like? Well, we're hoping for Abraham and Forsland as our top pairing. And those two guys, when they're on the ice, nobody does anything. Those two are amazing. Yeah. Jamie Forsland. Oof! I enjoy, as a goaltender, I enjoy watching a defenseman who has the abilities and skills that he does. Um, Abraham's just Abe's. He's awesome. Blocks a lot of shots. Hits guys when needs to, can jump up in the play, rang the post, scored a goal. He almost had a two-goal game last game. So exactly. what does that tell you? Um, and then outside of that, you know you got Nodder. Uh, hopefully Chris is able to make it. Yeah. And you know you got Geldy because Geldart's going to be there. That's his former team. Uh, and then outside of that, you don't know is Finn going to be there. Fingers crossed. And uh, Wyatt check. That's, that's what our defense looks like right now. And it scares – it should scare teams because when Martinelli and Barletta are playing yeah. – that's scary, okay? Because now you have the best defensive pairing in the game on your first pair. And Martinelli is a guy that I don't know if he's going to show up. He might not. He's a, he's a busy guy. He lives a busy life. Yeah. He likes to be there for five or six games, get his legs under him, and then playoffs go all out. That's how a lot of guys in this league are, especially the ones that have played at the level he has. He's a Memorial Cup champion, guys. He doesn't, like, this league is, this is for him to get exercise, right? Yeah, um, yeah. But if Martinelli does show up because he hates Tilbury, because we saw how much he hates Tilbury last year, um, and how he dominated their entire first line, um, that would make it interesting. But yeah, when Tilsonburg is at full health and full roster, I'm sorry, but they're the best team in the league. So it depends on who shows up, right? That's kind of where we're going with this. That was a chat we had with Sagrat last week. It always depends on who shows up. That's what's going to determine who wins these games most of the time. Is Tilbury has a full roster and Tilsonburg doesn't? Who knows? But... We also went into Tilbury with a full roster. They had a full roster in Game 5 last year. We went to their building with J- with Mitch Green and Jamie McQueen playing defense and won. won. So anything can happen. That's kind of where we're going with this. Um, yeah. So I got 5-4 Tilbury. Leafs got 7-5 Tilsonburg. Yep. Hopefully Leafs right. It's my birthday on Sunday, so I'm hoping that Tilsonburg delivers a good yep. present. Yep. Uh, only one way to find out, right? Yep. Uh, yeah, so yeah, let's talk about those power rankings. Let's talk about the power rankings, and then we'll close out the show. Uh, Andrew Rogers works for the Western Ontario Super Hockey League, as do us. Uh, Raji does a great job. Yeah, kind of. We work for the yeah, Thunder, yeah. but um, Raji does a great job. He's impartial. Uh, he just calls it like he sees it. Um, 
And here's how he's got the power rankings so far. Uh, you can also find these on the Washoe Twitter feed, Instagram feed, Facebook, in the team group chats, uh, group pages. These are all over the place. He yep. does a good job. Uh, I like what he's done. He does a really good job. So, power rankings broken down right here. Number one, Petrolia. Number two, your Tilsonburg Thunder. Number three, Strathroy. Number four, Alora. Number five, the Stratford Fighting Irish defending champions. Number six, the Tilbury Bluebirds. Defending runner runners up. <laughs> We're just trying to get the uh, newspaper. You know what did they, what did they say back in the day with Michael Jordan? It was uh, like in those days when the, the reporters would say stuff to piss off the players because they wanted to get them motivated. Yeah. That's kind of what we're doing here. <laughs> bulletin board material. Sorry, we're young. We never had bulletin board material. Uh, Tilbury at six. Number seven, the Alvinston Killer Bees. They're much better. I know they did just lose a player uh, to the British. League, I believe, and he I was a good so. player. Yeah, yeah, you saw that post yeah, as well. Post, um, yeah. Congratulations to him. Also, uh, tough loss for Alvinston, but he's a local guy. He'll be back. Um, number eight, Delhi. Surprise. Delhi was probably the worst team in the Washoe last year. They've had a much better year so far. Um, they're playing Woodstock this weekend, so let's go Flames. <laughs> yeah, let's go Flames. <laughs> go Flames, go. Um, also, Delhi, I have made a goal horn for you guys. We do custom goal horns as well. Um, I've made a goal horn for you guys, and uh, if you're ever interested in hearing it or potentially using it, it flows really well. Uh, shout out to you guys. We don't hate you guys. We beat you guys like 18 to four last year. There's no hard feelings. I know that's not going to be that way this year. There. You I guys, you guys are going to be better than that uh, oh, yeah. this year. But shout out to Delhi. We do goal horns. Let us know if you want to take a look at it. Uh, number nine, Dunville, the Arrows, uh, who we just beat. Uh, they're ahead of the two bottom teams, the two winless teams, the only two teams who have not won a game so far, and they will eventually play each other, so that streak will end. The, the Woodstock Lakers and the Orangeville Blitz are 10 and 11 as so. Yeah. Leaf, I like those rankings a lot. I would like to see Tilsonburg at one because I'm a Thunder fan, and this is Thunder Hour podcast, but I don't mind Petrolia being there because Petrolia has earned it, man. They're a good team. I think, I think they're up there because they've played six games. Tilsonburg's played three. And they're five and one. They have not lost outside of Tilsonburg since Tilsonburg. Mm-hmm. So, Petrolia is a good team, man. Even when we go there next Friday, because we're making the road trip down to Petrolia. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be first responders night too. So just a shout out to anybody in Petrolia area or Tilsonburg area. First responders, first responders night, five dollars if you are if you bring your certification of proving you're a cop, yeah. firefighter, uh, you know, orange, uh, EMS, whatever it is. Uh, Coast Guard. Uh, I think Dylan, Dylan Denemy might be able to get in for five yeah. bucks too. He's a yeah, border guard. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> so I, I love the jerseys too. Petrolia released the jerseys. Um, they are they look really sharp. They're going to be auctioned off later on. Uh, it'll be our first trip to Petrolia. My first game in Petrolia since I was eight years old watching the Squires play when I was a little guy. I don't think I've ever been, so no experience. Yep, no experience for Leaf. Uh, we're really Can't looking wait. forward to it. Uh, yeah, Petrolia number one in this league on the power rankings. Hopefully we can go there next Friday and change that. But we still have to find out what happens this Saturday. Exactly. As for the three in the middle, that's the, the four in the middle, it's kind of a jam up. We got Strathroy, Alora, Stratford, Tilbury. You could probably interchange all of them. Personally, I would flip that. Um, I And again, Strathroy's had a great start to the year, so we can't hate on them. I would put, personally, Stratford at three. I would put Tilbury at four. And then I would have Alora and then Strathroy um, would be five and six. Um, but again... Strathroy, hats off to them. They've had a great start to the season. Go Jets for you guys that are Jets fans. Um, I mean, uh, what a big Jets this year. Jeez. Yeah, let's not get into NHL conversation. Oh, We're already an hour and ten minutes, buddy. Oh. We don't have all night. Uh, yeah, we, you won't. <laughs> we actually do. But anyway, other than that, I like it. Alvinston, Delhi, Dunville, Woodstock, Orangeville to close it out. I'd put Woodstock at the bottom. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Zerzy, we're just kidding. We're just kidding. I'm not. I know he's not. I would. <laughs> okay, okay. Good job, Andrew Rogers. We're hoping to have you on the podcast potentially next week, depending Tulsa. on what happens. Yeah. Yeah, Tulsaberg got two on the power rankings list. And I think after this weekend, we could rise or we could fall. Who knows? I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. yeah. Don't mind the sound effects from Leaf. Uh, that's why we don't do the just audio podcast version yeah. anymore not only because apple makes us pay to do it and spotify and also, does as I well i like to just boom right yeah, the desk. yeah i boom when we did the first episode apple podcast release oh a apple sped up the podcast for no reason 
I'm so, pretty sure you did. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, well, it was one of the two of us. I blame it on Apple. They're a multi-billion dollar I didn't corporation. Produce that one, so. I produced the audio version. He does the video version. That's why the audio version was so much better. Oh. But anyway, <laughs> um, Apple charges us per month, and so does, so does Spotify. We just didn't feel the need. We're not making money. We're not here to make money. We're here to just have fun. YouTube lets us do it for free. Um, and I mean, unless Mackie moving or Domino's or the mill want to pay us to do this, then we'll go over to the, uh, to the audio versions as well. But no, uh, it's been, it's been a great time so far. It's been a great ride. This has been episode five of Thunder Hour podcast. Thank you everybody for joining us again. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get Razor on tonight. Just some time constraints. Uh, he's a busy guy. We're busy guys. Uh, we're just trying to get it figured out. Leaf Dietrich did a 16 hour move today. So he's pretty tired. Um, if you need something moved, if you need furniture moved in your house, call this guy. He does it for free. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> for free? Yeah, I buy it, honestly. But shout out Thunder Nation. Thank you so much yep. for joining us tonight. Shout we will out. see anybody who makes the trip down to Tilbury tomorrow night. 7.30 puck drop. Tilbury Arena. I cannot wait. Thanks. We made that trip five times last year. We want to make it another two times at least this year. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Good night from Woodstock, Ontario. Woodstock, Ontario. For Leaf Dietrich, I'm Trey Hamilton. This has been another episode of Two Goofballs Having Fun and Talking Crap to Refs in Dunville. Thank you so much for watching Thunder Hour Podcast, brought to you by Domino's Pizza in Tilsonburg. Good night, Tilsonburg. We will see you tomorrow night. Let's go, Thunder! Let's go, Thunder! <laughs>